So I wanted to make this video because connecting with professors is obviously incredibly important for grad school and if you're trying to do something like Fulbright it's also very important and it also happens to be something that you end up having to learn a lot on your own but I think it's really important and valuable to learn from people that have had some success doing it in the past so that was kind of some of the motivation in creating this video because I have had success actually connecting with a decent amount of professors over the past year and I wanted to share some of the things that I have learned along the way that have been really helpful in actually maintaining connection and making sure that it's actually meaningful. I've been able to actually communicate with um, some professors and now connect with them on LinkedIn and actually set up some Zoom meetings with some really cool collaborators and now I have all of these kinds of people that I may be able to reach out to in the future and they know who I am. But anyway, I want to walk through the process of how I am actually connecting with them and um, kind of following up after the initial connection. I think that's really valuable for anyone pursuing grad school. So thank you for watching. <laughs> and if you are new to this channel, I love to post content related to research and I do marine research myself. So that's kind of like my thing, my niece. So if that is of interest to you, I definitely encourage you to subscribe to this channel and like this video, but I'll go ahead and get started and get into it. Okay, so the first kind of thing I wanna clarify is that I'm personally interested in thesis-based graduate programs. So this is kind of more geared towards people that are doing this sort of thing, but I think if you're reaching out to professors individually, then you are also interested in doing a thesis-based graduate program. Um, but just wanted to mention that there's a lot of I mean, there's generally thesis-based graduate programs and then there's professional programs, but um, those professional programs might have a different kind of approach for how you actually get into the program. For thesis-based programs, it is really important to have a specific professor to have a connection with to actually sponsor you. The very first thing that I kind of started doing back in um, 2019 when I really started reaching out to a lot of different professors for um, Fulbright and now with pursuing graduate school is I made a Google spreadsheet with all of the potential professors that I was interested in. So as I was searching through different programs, I was mainly looking for, um, I, I first actually went to the schools and locations that I was mainly interested in, and then I would go to that school and start looking through their um, professors in the, my desired department. So that is um, biology. So websites for different uh, colleges are obviously going to look very different. So you kind of just have to go through each individual professor and actually look at the research that they do. So while I'm doing this, I'm mainly looking for professors that are doing benthic vertebrate type work, diversity type work. So I love community ecology. I look for those kinds of things. I also like to look for um, a tie with the human community. So anthropogenic pressures and that kinds of thing. I'm looking for those type of research interests. So for each individual professor, I'll go to their website. I think this is the most valuable resource for identifying what professor is gonna be a really good fit for you. So I end up going to each of their websites and I look at their main research interests. And on their websites is where you can start to get a really good grasp of if this lab is gonna be a good fit for you. And then if you're really starting to feel like you're getting a really good vibe for this lab, you think that you might be a really good fit for this specific professor or this specific lab, then this is when you really want to dig into the actual research that this lab does. So this is when it's a really good idea to look at their publications. Sometimes it's even more valuable if you go to, sometimes there's a section within their website of get involved. And this is where the professor is going to talk about interested grad students, what you should be doing to prepare to actually reach out to that professor. So a lot of times that's going to be uh, coming up with a CV, coming up with some references to give them, and also a cover letter. So this is really important to actually notice if there is some requirements for, or like some preferences of the professor before you reach out to the actual professor, definitely pay attention to them because some professors are getting 
so many emails each month or even each week of interested students for their lab and if it's just a generic email and it's not having what they're looking for then they're going to either ignore it or take forever to get back to it so make sure that you have identified what these people actually want um, for grad students to reach out to them. Some professors make it really clear. They want you to read these three publications. They want a CV, they want a cover letter, and they want references. Some professors lay all of that out for you and some just don't have that information. I think it's always better to do more, but when you are a aspiring grad student and you have lots of different professors that you are interested in, I think the most important things that you should um, prioritize are their most recent publications um, or the publications that you're specifically interested in and if there are selected publications then those are also pretty important. I don't think it's so important to like dive into them and understand every single thing that they have done within those publications but to at least understand the abstract and maybe come up with some of your own research questions is really important um, for generating meaningful conversation when you actually do reach out to them. So once you've started to get a really good idea of some specific professors that you're really interested in, I really recommend coming up with like a Google spreadsheet or whatever else you're comfortable with, but coming up with a way to kind of organize all of the potential professors that you want to reach out to and maybe including a section of their major research interests and also um, just other relevant information that you can think of if they have a specific grant for money that you could be using for your thesis or anything that works for you. For me, I have, I actually rate all of the professors on a scale from like 1 to 10 of how much I really think they, they relate to my own research interests and how interested I am for them. I also have like a section in that Google spreadsheet for my comments on their um, on that professor but I, I think it's just important to have some sort of tool to make sure that it's organized so you also when you've reached out to several professors to know who you've reached out to and maybe who you need to follow up with in the future um, it's just a good way to stay organized so as far as actually reaching out to the professor and the email that you should send to them if they have specifically asked for a CV uh, cover letter and references you have to make sure that you have that that's how they're actually going to take you seriously and prioritize you over other students if the professor doesn't require those things I think it is well, the most important thing is to um, kind of show the professor that you have actually looked into their work and that you care about their work. And you can do that a lot of different ways, but I think at the end of it all, the professor is going to actually pay attention to and value people that are, that really care and actually understand a bit of what they do. Like there's some meaning behind them choosing this specific professor other than just I don't know, the department or the school that they're at or maybe even the, the general topic that they're working with. Like coral restoration is a big flashy topic. You need to understand what exactly this professor does with coral restoration and why among all the coral restoration biologists is this coral restoration biologist your favorite. <laughs> In this email, you should also make sure it's not excessively long because professors don't tend to, I, I found with my previous supervisor that she uh, is just a very busy person, so shorter emails with very concise information available is definitely more valuable than a very long email that they might not have time or might not want to fully dedicate to. So once you've sent your initial email, don't be offended and don't be surprised if they don't respond within a week or two weeks or if they don't even respond at all. Professors are very busy people and they get lots and lots of people that are reaching out to them. So after maybe a week or two, it's good to send a follow-up email just to make sure that they've seen it maybe come up with um, some more questions related to the research that you've reviewed 
definitely remind them that you are interested in. This is going to help you stand out among others. And if you really want to set yourself apart, I found this was a really, really great way to connect with um, a professor. Um, personally, I had a professor that I was able to connect with in Hawaii, and um, we were able to establish a pretty cool connection um, through this method, but offer to have some kind of Zoom call or um, a short call. Um, I, when I asked this professor that I'm interested in working with in Hawaii, if um, he could have this call, I said literally 10 to 15 minutes, I just want to hear more about what you do. And um, it took a lot of persistence. I had to keep having another follow-up email like every two weeks because um, he just wasn't responding, but that's okay, he's a busy person. So I just offered to have a Zoom call, um, only 10 to 15 minutes, and he agreed to have the Zoom call and it ended up lasting an hour. But um, we had a really incredible conversation and that gave me like, and I think it gave him a much better idea of how good of a connection it would be for grad school um, with me being in his lab and if that would really make sense. So I definitely eventually, if you really start to like a professor and you're really serious about pursuing um, this specific lab, offer a Zoom call, I think it can be really, really beneficial in um, understanding more about what they do and understanding if you're going to be happiest and if the professor is going to be happiest with you uh, working in that lab. So kind of some last tips with generating meaningful connections and keeping connections alive over time. Um, some things that I've been doing is if I have looked at their research again and I've come up with some more questions, then I will go ahead and email them and ask them specific questions about their um, current research, or I will ask, um, I'll give them an update of something relating to my research, and I'll come up with some kind of question that kind of overlaps my own research with his. Another way that I've been connecting with different professors and kind of keeping Connections Alive is actually LinkedIn recently. Um, this has been really cool. I, I've been really active on LinkedIn recently and connecting with um, once these professors actually know my name and know who I am because I've emailed them and we've corresponded a little bit, I go ahead and actually connect with them on LinkedIn. And that way they get an update every time I post something related to my research and it gives them actually a notification. And I found that um, one of my top professors at UC Santa Barbara is now looking at my account because I keep posting things related to my research and he's actually getting more exposure to what I'm doing in that way. So another really cool way to engage with professors, LinkedIn is really growing. I think with the younger professors more so, um, older professors don't seem to be as on this um, platform or as social savvy as the younger ones, but I found that this has been Kind of cool. I noticed that my top professor at UC Santa Barbara actually looked at my account um, after posting something related to my thesis, which was pretty awesome. So yeah, and then I guess the last way to kind of maintain a connection is stay um, up to date with what research that they're posting, stay up to date with their kind of ongoing events. Another big growing thing within um, research is Twitter, and a lot of professors will often post their most recent events, most recent publications on Twitter now. So follow these professors on Twitter and stay informed with what they're doing. Stay engaged in the conversation if you can. So I think that is kind of all of my lessons learned and advice at this point in time as I'm reaching out to professors and learning so much about how this works because there's so many different ways you can do it. There's so many different things that have worked for some and not for others. So. That is a lot of the things that I have learned most recently. So I hope you found this video useful and please let me know if you have any other related questions to this topic. If you are currently reaching out to different professors, um, different things that have worked for you, I love to have those kinds of conversations. So don't be afraid to reach out on social media or any kind of platform. But thank you for watching this video and if you found it useful, I encourage you to give it a like, it helps me out a lot as a new channel, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Good luck in actually connecting with professors in this crazy time right now, but you can do it. <laughs>